What's up YouTube? Um, today I'm going to talk about the uh, infamous K20 A3. Um, a lot of Honda people will tell you to stay away from it. Um, not much you can do with it. It sucks. Blah blah blah. Well, not everybody has a lot of money. Uh, you know, people have financial issues and stuff like that. And to be honest, unless you're like looking for, you know, high horsepower, like, you know, 600 or something like that, or you're trying to, you know, run like nine seconds in the quarter or, or something like that. Yeah, maybe K20 A3 might not be the best option for you. But if you're just looking for a, you know, a car that's faster than pretty much anything that might pull up next to you on the street, or if you're looking, you know, just to have fun or, you know, like a little road, a road course car or autocross car. A K20 A3 can handle your needs. Um, it is not some weak motor that you can't do nothing with. I mean, people mod D series, correct? Yeah. So why not mod a K20 A3? So um, I just wanted to talk about it. Um, so about the K20 A3, yes, um, it doesn't have a real VTEC. Um, it has a sort of VTEC, a, a VTEC kind of operation that happens on the intake side um, where you have a two lobe, two rocker setup and uh, basically one of the valves don't open all the way until that uh, the VTEC pin at which is engaged at like 2200 RPMs the VTEC pin comes in and the bigger lobe starts to open both of them all the way you know and now you have both valves opening all the way past 2200 RPMs now um, about that now you might have a guy that has a base model rsx or you know something like that um with the k28 3 you know i'm not sure about the civic si it has a a, a, a regular intake uh, manifold but the base rsx has a uh, plastic in a manifold and actually if you look the k28 3 and the rsx actually builds more torque than the civic si k28 3 even though they're exact same motor um, the reason for this is that plastic intake actually. Um, so what happens is, um, yeah, you only got that little economy VTEC that happens at 2200, but when you get about, uh, about 4700 or five, uh, yeah, somewhere around there. Cause you know, the K2083 stock doesn't really read that high. Um, basically it switches from the short runners to the longer runners. And that is why you might get a uh, base RSX or somebody who has one that says they hear a kick at um, a higher RPM. So it's not really a VTEC VTEC engaging. It's actually just the runners switching over and allowing you to have that extra amount of torque and that extra power. So um, in my opinion, I think the K28 3 RSX will be probably slightly uh, faster than the Civic Si. But um, let's move beyond that. Um, so you know how the K28 3 works versus the three lobe, uh, three rocker setup in the uh, K28 2 or the K20Z1, all those ones that had the real VTEC in them. So um, yeah, this one only has the two lobe. Now, how do, uh, I mean, all right, let's 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 talk about, you know, what people uh, will say about the K28 3. They'll say, you know, it doesn't have a real VTEC. It uh, doesn't have oil squirters, you know, it's a it's a weaker motor, the internals are weaker, and all that jazz. It, it can't handle the high revs. Okay, so I'm going to call BS, you know, I mean, not BS that doesn't have oil squirters and BS that has weaker internals. But I'm going to call BS that it can't handle a good amount of power, like those guys will tell you. Um, the uh, K28-3... Um, First of all, you need to have, to make a K20 A3 come alive, you need to have bolt-ons that are designed to, um, like my previous video talking about inertial supercharging, you need to have bolt-ons that can get the most out of the K20 A3. And then secondly, what I recommend, this is cheap, you know, it's what, about $200, $300 to get some internals from like an A2. An A2 will directly go into the K20 A3. You don't have to swap the K20 A2 head. You only need the internals. 
which that includes the exhaust rocker because once I like I just said a minute a while ago the it only has that on the um, intake side so you're gonna need the exhaust rockers from the K2082 and uh, the uh, cam um, you're gonna need the uh, or the camshaft sorry you're also gonna need the uh, intake side as well um, so you can run uh, three rocker set up on the intake side as well um, but basically um, instead of just pushing that pin through the two rockers you'll have to get the uh, pins as well the little uh, LAM uh, was it lost access motion or some LAM pins those little pins that go inside that uh, engage the rockers or whatever um, you're gonna have to get that that stuff as well so you're gonna have to get all the internals so you can have a VTEC a real VTEC inside the a uh, a3 that way you'll be able to rev your A3 to past 8,000. I don't recommend revving it as high as Type S's do, but you know, you can get it up there to 8,200 or something like that, you know, safely. And people are doing this and they still have their K20A3s five years later, okay? So it's not gonna just blow up like everybody says, oh man, you put that much power and it's gonna blow up. Why even bother? It's not, you're gonna, it's, there's people that still run the same setup whether it's the VTEC killer where you're always engaged in VTEC or whether you actually set up the uh, K2082 VTEC which is where you only have the VTEC engaged past a certain RPM which of course you'll need K-Pro to set up. You, you can have the K2082 VTEC kind of set up in your A3 as well and everything I'm talking about yes re requires a, a tuner, a K-Pro or a K-Tuner or um, whatever you got. Um, it's gonna require that um, so yeah with these with that setup with the VTEC from the A2 or if you run the VTEC killer personally I prefer having a VTEC set up if it's a daily driver um, because I don't think it's uh, practical to have your VTEC always engaged if you're daily driving it so to me I would go ahead and do the A2 way um, instead of just run the VTEC killer if you daily drive your car um, another thing, uh, all right, so if you, uh, do do these setups, uh, people have gotten over 200 wheel horsepower out of these K28-3s with just bolt-ons and doing the, the regular VTEC setup on them. And you still haven't spent as much as you would for a K28-2. I mean, you can get a K28-3 for probably like $300 because nobody wants them and nobody knows what to do with them. So yeah, you can get a K28-3, $300, $400, you know, good mileage and everything. Um, now, keep in mind with the automatic base or, uh, yeah, because the Civic SI definitely comes only stick. Um, with the automatic base, you'll have to do a little bit more work because A, there's not really any tuning applications for the automatic without doing, you know, like piggybacks and stuff like that. Um, and I think B, um, it'd be kind of uh, weird with the shift points, I would think. Um, yeah, I'm not too familiar with the automatic, so I can't really give you that much. But um, yeah, with the stick shift, um, you should be able to um, uh, get over 200 wheel horsepower with the uh, K2083. So, in my opinion, um, the K2083 is a is a good motor. I mean, you can use it. Don't believe all the bad stuff people are going to automatically say when you mention the K2083 in any Honda any Honda group or any kind of um, form. Uh, or RSX form or something like that because I'm gonna tell you straight up they're going to dog it they're gonna you know laugh at you or whatever if you say anything about a base model RSX or K2083 um, but I'm making this video to give you guys some hope all right um, I hope this video helps out and uh, I'll check you guys in the next video um, for the next video I might be removing the rear seats back there um, I'm about to probably just start making this a straight track car because I already got a you know SUV as a daily so don't really need this as a daily so what do I have rear seats for 
So I'm about to start making this, get the harness going so I can have racing seats and it will keep me planted because I've had issues with uh, being jerked around in high G-force corners. Um, even when I was making that uh, left foot braking video, uh, I kind of got slung around a little bit and I had to brace myself with my foot. So um, that's probably what's coming up next. If not, I might do a, uh, one more drag racing video. You know, I'm trying to get the drag racing uh, out and I'm going to do on the track so I can get a time slip for you guys so you can see what, what's up with the car. But um, yeah, that's what's going what's gonna to be coming in the next video. So uh, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit that like button and I will catch you guys later.